Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 11 Equilibrium Video 2. Today's topic is solving rigid body equilibrium problems. Uh, uh, the objective is obviously to be able to solve problems that involves rigid bodies in equilibrium. Let's take a look at our first example. Now, Auto Magazine reports that a certain sports car has 53% of its weight on front wheels and 47% on its rear wheels with 2.46 meters wheel base. This means the total normal force on the front wheel is 0.53 W and that on the rear wheels is 0.47 W where W is the total weight. The wheel base is the distance between the front and the rear axles. How far in front of the rear axle is the car's center of gravity. So this is L, center of gravity. What is this? So that's a talk about the conditions of equilibrium is net force equals to zero. So we already know 0.47 W plus 0.53 W, that should be equals to W. So we know force is, uh, the first condition satisfies uh, equilibrium condition. The second condition is the torque. Net torque has to be zero. When we talk to when we talk about a torque, we have to talk about a point. This means it doesn't really which point do you you can choose. You can choose any point that's convenient for you. So for the because we are trying to find LCG, so the point I would like to choose is this point at the uh, rear axle. This is the point, right? Here is my y axis. So we know some of the force equals to zero. We just have to use the second condition to figure out LCG, the distance of a center of gravity. So let's take a look over here. There are three forces. The first force produces zero torque because that's, that is my O, my origin. The second force, W, produces a clockwise torque. So it's negative W times LCG. The third one, N equals 0.53 W that's going upward that produce counterclockwise torque. So that's positive. I said this equals to zero, then I solve W equals 1.3 meters. Another example, uh, a heroic rescue. So Sir Lancelot is trying to rescue Lady Elaine from Castle Von Doom by climbing a uniform ladder that is 5 meter long and weighs 180 newtons. So here is the center of the mass for the ladder because it's uniform. So over here is 180 newtons. Lancelot, who weighs 800 newtons, stops a third way to the ladder. So here is Lancelot and the weight of Lancelot. The bottom of the ladder rests on a horizontal stone ledge and leans across the moat in equilibrium against a vertical wall that is frictionless because of thick layer moss. The ladder makes an angle 53.1 degrees with the horizontal, conveniently forming 345 right triangle. So this is 5, that's hypotenuse. So over here, the opposite has to be 4, adjacent has to be 3. Find a normal and a friction force on the ladder at its base, right over here. What is Fs and what is N2? So now let's talk about the conditions for equilibrium. All the net force has to be zero. So the net force in the x direction has to be zero. The net force in y direction has to be zero. In x direction has to be zero, that means Fs has to be equals to N1. In y direction means N2 has to be equals to 800 plus 180. So right away, we can figure out what N2 is. But we really don't know Fs and N1. We only know they are they have to be the same. Same magnitude and opposite direction. So the other condition is net torque equals to zero. When you talk about net torque, you can choose any point on this uh, line. I choose this B. This is because at B, I can get rid of two forces, Fs and N2, because both Fs and N2 does not produce torque on this point B because their lever arm equals to zero. So torque on B equals to zero. What's torque on B? N 
produce counterclockwise torque. So it's N1 times the lever arm of N1 is 4 meters. Now, 800 newtons produce clockwise torque. So 800 times the lever arm for 800 is 1 meter. And 180 newtons, the lever arm for 180 newtons is 1.5 meter. So net torque equals to zero. So from here, I can solve for N1. N1 happens to be equals to Fs. So they are both equals to 268 newtons. B, find a minimum coefficient of static friction needed to prevent slipping at the base. So we know Fs equals mu s times n2. So mu equals to Fs times divided by n2. Fs is 268 and n2 is 980. So I have 0.27. C, find the magnitude and direction of contact force on the ladder at the base. Contact force are the combination of n2 and Fs. So contact force has basically has two components. One is Fs, the other one is N2. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of contact force. So N2 squared plus Fs squared, 268 squared plus 980 squared, you have 1,020 newtons. That's a magnitude. To find a direction, we have to use the inverse 10 of opposite over adjacent, which gives us about 75 degrees. So this is where N2, that, I mean, this is FB. That's a contact force at that point. Another example, equilibrium and a pumping iron. So the figure shows a horizontal human arm. So this is just a free body diagram is showing here. Lifting a dumbbell, the forearm is in equilibrium under the action of the weight W. Here is the weight, a dumbbell. The tension T in the tendon connected to the bicep muscle here is the tension that's on the tendon. And the force E exerted on the forearm by the upper arm at elbow joint. So there is E right here. So for, for clarity, the point A where the tendon is attached is drawn further away from the elbow. So this, this point should be a little bit closer to E, but just for clarity, it's drawn over here it's a little bit far the weight w of the dumbbell and the angle theta between the tendon the tension force and the horizontal are given so theta is given and w is given we want to find the tendon tension what is t and what are the two components of force at elbow so what is ex and ey we can neglect the uh, weight of the forearm itself so we pretend that there is no weight for the forearm. So basically, there are three scalar quantities in O, E, X, E, Y, and T. Now let's talk about the conditions for equilibrium. Let's talk about torque. Uh, torque equals to zero. So which point should we use torque? Should we set it to be zero? I choose this point E because at this point, I can get rid of two two variables, EX and EY. So the torque, since TX does not produce any torque, because TS, TX passes through this point, there is no lever arm. So only TY and W produce torque. W produce positive torque and TY produce negative torque. So torque E equals to zero, W times L, the weight force times the length lever arm minus ty equals t sine theta times the lever arm which is d that should be equals to zero that's how i find t t equals to w times l divided by d times sine theta so first variable is um, found the second condition is the force force in the x direction has to be zero so that means Tx has to be equals to Ex. Ex Tx equals to T cosine theta, and T equals to WL divided by D sine theta times this quantity times cosine theta. That gives you WL divided by D times cotangent theta. 
and where is the direction of the EX? This EX should be to pointing to the left, opposite of your TX. The other condition is the force in the y direction equals to zero. Now in the y direction, we have W, we have TY, and we also have EY. So we don't really know the direction EY, but we just assume possibly it's upward. So we use TY plus EY should be equals to W. So W equals to T. TY is T sine theta plus EY, that equals to W. From here, we can solve for EY. EY equals to W minus T sine theta. That equals to W minus T equals to W L divided by D sine theta. We multiply sine theta on this side. So it's W minus W times L over D. Now, let's take a look at this diagram. L is this, from the dumbbell to the elbow, and D is from tendon to the elbow. Obviously, L is bigger than D. What does this mean? This means EY actually is pointing downward, pointing downward. We don't know the sign of this component, so we draw it positive for convenience. So, but now from what we figured out, we know that is downward. Actually, the arm is exerting downward force on the elbow. Now let's take a look at this last one, check your understanding. So metal advertising sign, which weight W for a specialty shop is suspended from the end of the horizontal rod of length L and a negligible mass. The rod is supported by a cable at an angle theta from the horizontal and by a hinge at a point P. Rank the falling force magnitudes in order from greatest to smallest. So the weight W of the sign, the tension in the cable, that's T, and the vertical component of the force on the rod at a hinge P. So again, this is equilibrium. So we have conditions net torque equals to zero. So you can choose any point actually uh, as your as your origin so i since i'm not i'm going to choose p because i have to find the relative size of w and tension so relative to p w give you uh, clockwise torque and t give you counterclockwise torque they should cancel out so you have w l equals t sine theta times l that means w equals to t sine theta this means T has to be bigger than W. The second part is the force in the y direction equals to zero. The force in the y direction, you have W is down, T sine theta, and PY should be up. I just assume PY is up. But because W equals to T sine theta, that means really PY equals to zero. From the top, we also know T has to be bigger than W. So the final answer is T is bigger than W, bigger than PY. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.